Welcome to MS Research Australia's Research Report. I'm Dr Hamish Campbell and in this series we explore the research that's going on in Australia and around the world. In this episode we meet Dr Peter Crouch and Dr James Hilton. They are looking at copper in the body. Now copper is actually an important trace element and the cells in our body actually need it. Dr Crouch and Dr Hilton believe that disruptions to copper in the body can, can, can contribute to motor neuron disease as well as MS. In this episode, they outline what's involved in their research and what the next steps are. So, we've been working on uh, diseases of the brain and central nervous system uh, for a long time. Uh, in the early days, uh, I was doing, working on a particular project where we identified that uh, changes to copper can play a big role in these uh, diseases. And Basically, copper is an essential element. We need it in every cell in our body. If we don't have the appropriate amount of copper inside every cell, we just don't live. So, what we're finding is that in these particular diseases, there, there are changes to copper, uh, and it affects important copper-dependent processes. The idea is that in multiple sclerosis, there are changes to these copper-dependent processes, uh, and they might be contributing to the disease process. So if we can identify these changes, the idea is that we go in with a therapeutic agent where we can correct these copper changes and hopefully at least mitigate the progression of the disease. Uh, well, there are three parts, I think, to why we decided to look at um, copper levels with relation to MS research. And the first part is to do with um, primary progressive multiple sclerosis, which represents a small subset of the MS group and is characterised by a lack of relapses and remissions, and instead a progressive decline uh, in disability. So given our experience with uh, motor neuron disease research, this was something that was quite of note to us. Um, secondly, is to do with one of the main models of multiple sclerosis that's used which involves the use of a copper chelator, which basically means this compound mops up copper that would otherwise be used for very important processes within the central nervous system. So given our um, experience and uh, focus on the copper aspect, this was of great interest to us. And the third component would be to with uh, a rare condition called copper deficiency myelopathy which is in some ways quite similar to um, multiple sclerosis, especially the progressive forms. And as the name suggests, it's uh, characterized by an acquired copper deficiency, typically by a, a consequence of gastric bypass surgery. And um, the result of that is uh, a range of myelin abnormalities. And considering the key component to multiple sclerosis is the negative impact on myelin, this, along with the other two facets, really drew our interest towards this line of research here. Yeah. Our work, uh, we think it's important in helping understand MS and potential treatments because uh, we, we, we've been investigating the role of copper in these diseases, uh, as I mentioned, and uh, a lot of our recent focus has been on motor neuron disease. Uh, and there we have identified that particular copper-dependent processes are disrupted in the brain and spinal cord. And encouragingly, we, we've actually got a drug which can penetrate into the brain and the spinal cord, and it can actually restore functionality to some of these disrupted copper-dependent processes. So what we're really hoping is that the things that we've identified in motor neuron disease are going to be readily translatable to multiple sclerosis. Uh, if we're correct on this, uh, it's very encouraging because it means that we've got a potential drug which could be utilised for multiple sclerosis uh, and also an understanding of the role of copper in multiple sclerosis, there's really not a lot of uh, known about that at the moment. So any new understanding that we generate on that front is going to be new and insightful. Well, we think that our research will improve the quality of life of people with um, MS by, by the focus on uh, potential new therapeutic avenues for treating especially the progressive
forms of MS and in particular the primary progressive forms of MS which are more readily similar to motor neuron disease which had been a focus of ours. Um, given the, the lack of understanding about what causes MS um, and despite the notable a number of risk factors that have been determined, there's still a lot to be learned about the disease. And on this front, especially with uh, primary progressive uh, multiple sclerosis, where up until very recently there have been no effective treatments and even the fundamental understanding of the disease is uh, somewhat not well, it's not really well understood. Um, we think that this offers a, a fresh, fresh perspective on, on the disease and we're readily confident that it'll produce some uh, important insights into the pathology. I guess the thing that inspired us to get into this field of work um, was all of the work and effort that we put into our motor neuron disease research. Uh, we, we'd invested a considerable amount of time and effort into creating this new understanding about what caused that particular disease and developing what we thought was going to be a legitimate therapeutic option for motor neuron disease. And when we made that connection to multiple sclerosis, the thing that inspired us is, well, wouldn't it just be fantastic if all of this time and effort that we've invested can immediately be transposed onto this disease where there is still such a clear clinical need for a, a, a new and more effective drug. So the inspiration wasn't from the disease itself, it was from the idea that we can get the most out of all the research that we've already done to, to really maximise all of these efforts. Um, and ultimately what we want to do is we just want to make drugs that are going to make sick people healthier. If we can do that, I mean, that, that's a general inspiration that affects all scientists. We're all striving for the same thing. But when we've got this drug for motor neuron disease and it's so close to this uh, clinical impact, to know that we might be able to do the exact same thing for multiple sclerosis, that's what gave us the inspiration to get into this area. Now that's a brief snapshot of this research. For more information, go to our website and make sure you like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future research reports. I'm Dr. Hamish Campbell and I'll see you next time.